Welcome to this edition of the Native News Update on this Monday, November 29th. I'm your host for today's program, Paul DeMaine. Many of the stories right here can also be found at our website at IndianCountryNews.com. And so here are some of the news stories for the day from the Associated Press and other Native News Services. Jury selection opened up for the alleged shooter in the murder of American Indian Movement member Anna May Pictou Aquash on November 29th. John Graham, a 55-year-old man from Canada, is accused of shooting Aquash in the head and leaving her to die on the Pine Ridge Reservation in, in December of uh, 1975 in South Dakota. Prosecutors say Graham and two other members of AIM kidnapped Aquash in late 1975 and executed her at the command of AIM leaders because they suspected Aquash of being a government informant. It took authorities almost three decades to charge Graham and a second member of AIM, Arlo Looking Cloud. Looking Cloud was convicted in 2004 and is serving a life sentence. Dick Marshall, accused of providing the gun in 1975 for the killing, was acquitted earlier this year of aiding and abetting murder and is refusing to testify in Graham's case because his attorney says he might be charged with perjury for lying. Thelma Rios, another AIM member, pled guilty earlier this month to being an accessory to kidnapping after admitting that she made a call to Denver, Colorado in December of 1975 on behalf of AIM leaders and initi initiated Aquash's kidnapping. Denise Maloney Pictou, one of Aquash's daughters, says she hopes Graham's trial will help bring justice to her family. Oregon and Washington fishery officials have agreed that no commercial or sport fishing will be allowed this season for the once plentiful smelt now under federal protection. Fishery managers set the rule during a conference call last week saying sport dipping for smelt is unlikely for several years. Smelt historically returned to the Cowlitz River every winter in abundance with smaller runs in several other area rivers. Runs started to falter in the late 1980s. The Daily News of Longville, Washington, says the last decent run on the Cowlitz was in the year 2003. The Cowlitz tribe petitioned to have the small silvery fish listed under the Endangered Species Act and NOAA Fishery Service listed them as threatened last March. Olympic National Park officials say a hiker found a badly decomposed body of a man among driftwood on a Jefferson County uh, beach. The Pen Peninsula Daily News reports that the Jefferson County Sheriff's Office believes the body was that of a missing Ho tribal fisherman whose boat capsized last month on the Ho River in Washington. The body was found November 25th on a beach 300 yards north of the river's mouth. The body was recovered this weekend. Jefferson County Sheriff and Chief Criminal Deputy Joe Knowles says there's a high probability that the body is that of a 21-year-old David Hudson, Jr. The Mayo Clinic of Rochester, Minnesota has been awarded a $6 million grant to expand cancer prevention and outreach to American Indian and Alaska Native patients. The National, uh, National Cancer Institute gave the five-year grant for clinical research studies in Alaska and Wisconsin and for the Hampton uh, Faculty Fellows Program. Mayo's Native American Programs Director, Dr. Judith uh, Cower, is currently one of only two American Indian medical oncologists in the United States. According to the Mayo's announcement, she will lead the new Spirit of Eagles Community Network Program, which will focus on comprehensive cancer control, including translational research, clinical trials, and continued community-based precipitatory research. The head of the Mohegan Sun Casino is stepping down to focus on developing business strategies in his other job as CEO of the operator of casinos in Connecticut and Pennsylvania. Mitchell Ettis said last week that the arrangement, which will start January 1st, will allow him to pursue new opportunities such as seeking management agreements with other companies controlled by the Mohegan Tribal Gaming Authority. Jeffrey Hartman, the Chief Operating Officer at the Indian Run Mohegan Sun and the Authority's Chief Operating Officer, will succeed ETES as Mohegan Sun's Chief Executive. A review panel is supporting the repatriation of Native artifacts from two museums. Two Southeast Alaska Native clans are seeking more than 50 sacred and patrimonial objects, including a 
Wrangell clan hat now held by the Alaska State Museum in Juneau. The clan in Huna wants to reclaim 50 objects that were sold to the University of Pennsylvania in 1920. The collection includes a wide range of items including blankets, headdresses, rattles, masks, a box drum, and cedar bark neck rings. The Native American Graves Protection and Repatriation Review Committee reviewed the request. New Mexico Governor-elect Susana Martinez has selected the head of the Indian Pueblo Culture Center to lead a team in reviewing the State Department of Indian Affairs. Martinez announced last week that Ron Solomon will serve as the team's chairman. Solomon is a member of the Laguna Pueblo. The five-member team will review the department to find ways of streamlining government. Other members of the team are Zleta Pueblo Governor John Robert Benavidez, Navajo Nation Department of Justice Attorney and Choctaw Tribal Member Brian Lewis, O.K. Awinge Resident and Businessman Ron Laveto, and Albuquerque Attorney and Southern Ute Tribal Member Sam Winder. And that is the latest roundup of news from Indian Country on this edition of the Native News Update. We want to thank you all for joining with us. Come back again soon.